Hello everyone, Mary Ann here, Revealing Light Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. Wherever you are in the world when you're watching, huge shout out to you. Thank you uh, for all your feedback and comments on my recent videos. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen um, my solar eclipse reading, um, I recorded that, I think it was Wednesday, Thursday of last week. Uh, since then, we've had a um, I won't say unprecedented, but certainly a rare earthquake in New Jersey and um, and New York or felt in New York as well. Um, the epicenter wasn't that far from the ex-president uh, Donald Trump's uh, golf club at Bedminster. Ironic, isn't it? I talked about um, mostly about uh, that there was a possibility for another earthquake event following the uh, earthquake off the coast of Taiwan just prior to my reading. In my reading, I talked a lot about Trump having a lot of trouble with his money and finances. And of course, since then, we've uh, we've found out that the bond that he uh, posted is actually almost falling apart. Um, and that he is, in fact, having um, money, a lot of money troubles. Uh, he's unable to stop the legal march in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's very much around his his downfall. His health issues are going to come to the fore uh, either around the eclipse time or uh, not long after. In this eclipse energy will affect us for about two years. I talked a lot about the Middle East um, and uh, whether or not Iran is going to answer back uh, in 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 what way for the bombing of its embassy. And whether or not uh, Netanyahu, who now is really facing ill repute, very much so, um, we found out that they used an AI program called Lavender with a sub-program called Where's Daddy? Basically, when we were all wondering about the buildings that just kept falling, the indiscriminate bombing, the high uh, casualties of women and children, the 33,000 um, Palestinians already killed in this, in Netanyahu's uh, war offensive, the hostages who aren't coming home either, um, those that are still being held captive, uh, Israel, uh, Jewish people are marching en masse. The mood is is diabolical uh, towards Netanyahu. Um, now, we found out that this AI program, Lavender, um, uh, basically targeted Hamas, anyone associated with Hamas. They weren't generals. They, they could have just anyone, anyone associated with Hamas. The AI program would wait till they came home at night, sitting around the dinner table with their family, their cousins, their aunts, their children, their wives. And they would bomb at that particular building, which uh, then not only, well, it's indiscriminate, isn't it? And it's not proportional, which is the the standard for war crimes in relation to international humanitarian law. So that's why we saw uh, we saw such tra travesty, such destruction. And, of course, uh, the condemnation of the world now means that Israel has opened up more uh, crossings and more and getting more aid in um, and uh, under pressure. And I had a lot of people saying Israel's not blocking aid. Well, they were because now they're opening more, more aid, allowing more aid to get in after the American president, Joe Biden, said, You do this, or else we will. Uh, we it was tied to the supply of weaponry. So um, this followed the uh, the world kitchen, world central kitchen stuff, um, and I talk a lot about that in my solar eclipse video. Today, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to go to Russia, and uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. We have an escalation of um, warfare uh, in Ukraine, but particularly, and some of you may not have been aware, that on the 22nd of March, in the shadow of this eclipse, we had 
Russian drones strike the dam uh, at Zaporizhia, which supplies the water to the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. And uh, I certainly didn't know about it until I sat with an intuition this morning and thought, gee whiz, I better look at Zaporizhia. And you can see this report. Uh, this is from, um, let's see, who is it? From The Guardian, dated the Saturday, the 23rd of March. And that is the photo of the drone strikes hitting the dam wall at Zaporizhia. And, uh, of course, those strikes, just continual bombardment of Ukraine's energy infrastructure has meant uh, large parts of Ukraine are out of power and have had to source power from places as far as Poland. Experts are now saying these continued attacks on the dam wall uh, actually are weakening the structure. And today uh, I've been reading that uh, Russia is again blaming Ukraine for those for that bombing of the the dam, and that's called cover, lying and covering their tracks. Uh, what has been their real intent? Uh, intent, uh, and that obviously has been to weaken that damn wall, if not destroy that damn wall. Um, let's look at Putin's natal chart and how the eclipse might be affecting him, because I think it's worth bearing in mind that this is the man who had great ability <laughs> through the sky, um, according to the stars in his natal chart, to be a to bring Russia into the new world, uh, to create wealth and prosperity for Russia. And indeed, he has done that. But this is also a man, his chart is a double-edged sword, that has the propensity, the bent, if you like, bent, to go toward uh, megalomania, narcissism. There is something very cruel in his natal chart, and we see we have seen that play out. Um, now, the natal chart, or or what the sky, what the what astrology tell us is is there's no accidents there. Could he have taken a different path, possibly? But was he? And this is the question: Was he meant to take this path in order to um, to teach us something? To uh, come at a time, and same with uh, Netanyahu and the uh, the brutality of Hamas on October 7th, the brutality before uh, on the West Bank uh, toward the Palestinians, really reaching a crisis point in Gaza on in October. And since then, what are we learning about this? Well, now we're able to hold Netanyahu up in ill repute, just as the Jewish people are calling for his resignation. Um, we're now able to see uh, the brutality of Putin and his land grabs and territory grabs and resources grabs as he marched into Ukraine two years ago. What is the culmination that is happening in Russia and Ukraine at the moment? I know that the aid package in, in the US is due to you to come to the house for a vote um will it get there well i think it will and i've read on this before and i've said it will pass in a uh, different type of form perhaps a watered down form but uh, i do feel that johnson actually does surprises and brings it in for a vote of course the MAGA element have said he won't be the speaker anymore if he does that Lots going on in the world, isn't there? Let's take a look at uh, Vladimir Putin's natal chart. It's um, very, very telling. Some of you have asked what astrology uh, software I use. Um, I use Astro Gold uh, for Mac. Um, and I also go back to my old favourite, Astro Dienst, uh, at times as well, because I find their charts particularly clear. It's a free software. Anyone starting out should visit astro.com, take a look. Now to Putin's chart. We have both a T-square, which is this red triangle, very difficult uh, aspect in astrology, um, which forebodes conflict, um, opposition, squaring off, um, 
great obstacles and challenges. But of course, if you can overcome all that, you have also have great achievement. Uh, so this red triangle tells us about the um, resilience, I guess, um, and strength. I'm going to say that it's not the way I would use strength, but brutal strength of, of Vladimir Putin and what he's overcome to uh, to be this dictator of Russia. We also have a grand trine, which is this triangle, blue triangle shape here, which brings in benefits and good luck. So he has this double-edged sword where he will uh, he will find the win that he's back to to achieve. I mean, he's pretty much decimated his opposition in Russia. But we also have this foreboding uh, coming in for him as well. I want to talk about this uh, this in his natal chart here. We have Jupiter, which is a benefic bestows benefits, expansion, luck here, but it's sitting aside uh, Algol. Now, you'll just see Algol, the fixed star, only moves one degree every 72 uh, years. Um, it is uh, conjunct with his Jupiter. Now, what Algol is, if you go back through my videos, you'll know that it is known, known as the uh, evil uh, star, uh, Algol, the Medusa's head, um, and great cruelty. This is a man who is capable of great cruelty. And, of course, it's almost exact with Hygieia, the um, associated with ill health. Um, and so his, the pathology of his psychology and mental illness is one that has a bent toward cruelty, toward evilness. I mean, this is, this is the, uh, the villain in the story. And um, it is opposite, or we have the his natal moon in Gemini in the eighth house, because the eighth house is can be about death. Uh, it is opposite Vesta in Scorpio. Uh, he's he's a Scorpio ascendant, which means how does he express himself? Scorpio is extremely um, well. It can be subversive, but it's intense and it's private. But also Scorpio is also associated with death and renewal. And so these are the themes in his chart. His um, conglomeration of planets here in Libra, his stellium in Libra, uh, is mostly in the in the in the twelfth house, which is what, what happens when we get round the zodiac. The twelfth house is the, the house where we finish up. We should have learned everything as we've made our way around the zodiac, and we should be wise beyond our beyond our years. Um, but there is uh, Neptune here in the mix. Neptune is an extremely creative, uh, and so is Pisces as well, 12th house is associated with Pisces. But Neptune is, is about something coming into form. And so when you see Neptune in a chart, you understand that this person has the will to bring something into form because Neptune's in Libra here. It's all about justice, justice for, for the Soviet Union, justice for the old USSR, the old Soviet republics, bringing all of those uh, borders and countries back in under Mother Russia's, um, Mother Russia's, I guess, embrace. And how is he going to do that? He's going to do that with a degree of uh, cruelty. He's going to do that by um, stopping opposition in his own country, by suppressing the actual people. And this is where things start to unravel for Vladimir Putin because up here in his 10th house of his public life, his presidency, if you like, is uh, Pluto in Leo. And Regulus, again, Regulus in Leo, the lion, strength, luck. But if you abuse that, then you have a downfall. Now, what tells me about this chart that I can probably confidently say will see Putin's downfall is that the south node in evolutionary astrology, I don't want to go into too much detail, but his south node is in Leo. 
which means that he'd already probably had, he could have even been a czar in his past life, he'd already had this power and kingly kind of status. It The South Node is what we have to let go of. It's our past accumulation of learning and then letting that go. It is obviously uh, opposing his uh, north node in Aquarius. Aquarius is about the people. What was he here to do in this lifetime? Bring, um, bring power to the people. Empower the people in relation to wealth, uh, prosperity, which he, which he, some have argued, yes, he's done that through um, the export of oil and gas. And uh, he would have fulfilled that had he not had it not become so much about himself holding on to power um, at any cost, at any cost, at this brutal Algol type of cost. But also... Putin has come in at this time also for for our for us to learn, for us to rise to the occasion at stopping the brutality, stopping the land grabs, stopping the power march, coming together in unity to stop that. And so he's working, his purpose is working on a number of levels. But this is a very, very cruel, cruel man. Cruel, cruel man with his moon in Gemini in the eighth house, uh, and it sits very close to, you know, the Jupiter Algol high G. Uh, his mind is always ticking over about who his enemies are, how he can vanquish them, and uh, how he can really uh, gather more land for more resources, more countries, more territory for himself <laughs> and for Mother Russia. Okay, let's look at how the eclipse might uh, impact on him and then we'll move to the tarot. Okay, so his eclipse charge, there's two things I want to pull out and I can't pull out anything, uh, anything. I can pull out anything. I can't pull out everything from a chart. So I, I'm, I want to get on to the tarot to follow this reading up with some tarot. Now, I do want to talk about um, the eclipse and the uh, Zaporizhia Dam in terms of the Saturn-Mars conjunction down here in Pisces. Now, the inner wheel is Putin's natal chart, and we can talk about houses here. The outer chart is the eclipse chart over Washington. So we'll only be looking at planets and aspects. We won't be looking at houses in this outer ring because that is uh, that is applicable to a geophysical um, uh, area. But I, I do, I guess, Washington in a way, um, most of Putin's battles have been um, against, uh, have involved America. And so how we can ask how will Putin's actions over this time draw America into something is it to a war? No, I'm not saying that. Where I'm going with this is the on the 22nd of March, the as I've said, the there was an attack by Russia on the Zaporizhia Dam, uh, which feeds the Zaporizhia nuclear plant, and that's weakened the structure of that dam wall. Today I read uh, that Putin is blaming Ukraine for this. How ridiculous. How ridiculous. Um so uh, Saturn and Mars in Pisces, Mars driving something forward, Pisces water, Saturn coming up against a wall. The metaphors here, just as the earthquake in New Jersey and New York felt New York, the, the epicentre was only a few kilometres from the ex-President Trump's golf club at Bedminster. And not very, not, I think only three kilometers from a town in New Jersey called Lebanon. And so you start to see the, um, the ways that this is 
I don't know, the synchronicities. And then they're really not there for, to prove or disprove with scientific measures. It's about just understanding that synchronicities exist. The damn wall. Okay, so uh, what have we got here? So the eclipse in Aries and Chiron, the wounded healer, and the north node are opposite his sun, Saturn, Mercury, and Neptune in the 11th, the stellium um, in the 11th and 12th house. So the eclipse in some way is going to hit Putin hard. My worry is, what does that actually mean? Well, the eclipse is also squaring his unpredictable, unforeseen uh, actions, lightning changes, his Uranus. It's also going to square his Uranus in the ninth house. And so uh, Ukraine has been striking with their drones, been striking oil refineries in Russia. And Putin's answering back. One of the ways he's answering back is targeting this, this dam at Zaporizhia. Experts are saying that these continued attacks on Zaporizhia are weakening the dam wall. Is that what Putin is intended? Absolutely. Absolutely that's what he's intending. Is he intending to create an absolute natural disaster in Ukraine, one that impacts on the Zaporizhia nuclear plant? Absolutely. What would that do? What would that do? Well, that would bring in the world, wouldn't it, to try and avert uh, disaster to keep these this nuclear reactor cooled down. Again, it's a bit like uh, watching what's occurring in Israel and Palestine and, and the Gaza. It's like a slow motion bad movie that we're watching that we, we can't seem to be able to influence or stop. And so we look to the heavens and we put our faith in in uh, in spirit, will this work out for our highest good? The other possibility in this chart, and I'll ask this direct question, is Putin could be assassinated. He could go to bed one night and, as I saw clairvoyantly, and not wake up. Is this Putin or is it somebody else? Well, the uh, Uran volatile Uranus-Jupiter conjunction, um, which becomes exact around the 20th of April, is sitting on his natal Jupiter and that is squaring his natal Pluto in Leo. Pluto, of course, is the ruled by, uh, well, Pluto is the god of the underworld. It is can be about death, corruption, power, coming something coming from under to the surface, something Putin himself can't foresee. It's in, it's hitting, the eclipse is hitting, uh, well, it's hit, it's conjunct with his Jupiter. And so whatever is going to occur, whether this is Putin doing something or something done to Putin is going to be pretty expansive. Uh, and we will all feel that as well. The eclipse energy, I should say, is trining his Pluto. What sort of expression of power are we going to see Putin do around the time of the eclipse? All right. Um, what is he planning? What is he planning? Okay, so um, again, uh, I'm throwing out astrology to me. Other astrologers might, uh, might say otherwise, but I don't see astrology as predictive. It gives us themes. It gives us possibilities. Uh, and we need to look at a big picture with astrology. It's not it's not like me throwing cards and saying and using my clairvoyance and saying, I think this is what my prediction is. It's about looking at the big picture and gathering as much information uh, from the skies, the stars as we can to look at the possible themes, the possibilities that this might bring forward. So um my worry is around the Zaporizhia Dam. Um, I wasn't aware of that attack on the 22nd of March. I am now. Um, and it is, these sub, these attacks are weakening the wall. Does he plan on 
doing something else with that damn wall. Remember, this is a man who th he stays awake at night in his emotions, the moon in Gemini in the eighth house, um, stays awake at night planning the demise of his enemies constantly. This is what makes this person tick. Okay, let's see. Is Putin planning any more attacks on the Zaporizhia Dam on the Dnipro River? I forget the name of the dam, but it's right there with the, uh, its water helps, I think, feeds into another dam that cools the reactor, a uh, nuclear reactor at Zaporizhia. He's actually bombed around the, the nuclear plant as well. Okay, so does Putin plan on uh, any more strikes on the Zaporizhia dam, the dam at Zaporizhia. Does Putin plan any more strikes on the dam at Zaporizhia? Does Putin plan any more strikes on the dam at Zaporizhia? Dam at Zaporizhia. Pluto and water. Um, underground. Okay, so we have the magician card. Not the card I wanted to see. The magician is manifestation uh, and manipulation and something coming to fruition in time. So already the damage could have been done or one more strike under the water might weaken that damn world. But there is something that he plans in time that Uranus-Jupiter uh, conjunction becomes exact around the 20th. Um then we get Mother Russia. And so I hope that the astrology that I've done to preface this tarot reading shows you how tarot and astrology work together. Abundance, Mother Russia. Uh, that is my card for Mother Russia. You can see the water. Look at the water in this chart and look at something coming to fruition in time. The magician card manifesting something that comes to fruition in time. This deck is the Astro Matrix Tarot for those that are wondering. Um, and this is abundance. Again, wanting the resources, wanting the power, the land grab, etc. for Mother Russia. But this is about Putin doing uh doing it through force brutal force and and evil evil ways uh if i can just put it like that in the past we have something uh waiting for his ship to come in again look at the water standing on the wall looking at the dam while well, looking at the water waiting for one ship to come in in my clairvoyant images i saw a lot of ships Okay, we have three of cups in the sky so far. These are all yes uh, cards. And we have circles of support, unity, and celebration. That's in the sky crowning this reading. Okay, oh, my God, there he is, the king of swords. His son is in uh, Libra, and this is air energy, uh, and this is strategy and planning. The master, remember I say, said he doesn't, he stays awake at night thinking about how he can vanquish his enemies remember also fixed star regulus in his 10th house will uh if you abuse your power it will be taken away from you here we have the king of cups in the present that is my card for biden and then we get the six of swords again a lot of water energy here moving out of troubled waters and so how does he what is he doing when he's trying to vanquish his en enemies, he would consider Biden uh, an enemy. And we get the seven of swords, lies and deceit. Um, lies and deceit. His plans extend uh, outward in many ways globally. We have the Knight of Cups, a peace offer, the past. Again, focused on the past, and there he is, his moon, uh, and and really a card that could uh, look at eclipse. So we we have here also the star card, and so I want to say that he could propose some kind of peace deal after a disaster. He could come in, create the disaster, and then fix the disaster and propose a peace settlement. Give me Eastern Ukraine and we will get out. Uh, and so that could be also part of his logic. 
we have here the Wheel of Fortune. Again, fortune, that grand trine, um, temperance, balance, and then we get something occurring uh, very, very quickly. We get the Hermit card, isolation, and then we get abuse of power and, and the death, the minor arcana death card. So I want to pull, uh, just let's get a clarifier on what this, so he's, what his proposition is, has, remember his moon in Gemini sitting aside alongside that um, that Hygieia, Algol and Jupiter. So out of misfortune, there's something around misfortune. Okay, let's have a look. He's propositioning something here. Uh, these are, these two are yes cards, um, but let's take a look. Let's get some clarity on it. Uh, is this a yes? It's certainly something that is part of his strategy. Will he weaken or bomb the damn wall yet again? We have here judgment and inevitability and the page of cups, lots of water energy and the devil. Absolutely, he could try and, as I thought, come up from some from underneath within the water, uh, weaken it, create the potential for a disaster and then come in and um, I don't know. He is so pathological, pathological toward his enemies, his opposition, anyone he considers enemies, that he's willing to do anything and go as far as he can to do that. Now, if he did anything to Zaporizhia, that would then impact on Russia and so we're, then we get to the possibility or the theme of um, something happening to him from his enemies or the enemy within. What is that? Uh, I know that there have been stories in mainstream media about or in media about uh, people talking him out of uh, tactical nuclear strikes on Ukraine. And so there are others around who would realise the disaster that would befall everybody, including Russia, if that Zaporizhia plant was jeopardised in any way. And so let's just look at, let's just look at, I mean, we're all on a knife's edge. We're all on a, the edge of a cliff, really. Uh, that's how it's feeling around this solar eclipse. Is it insurmountable? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So will the Zaporizhia nuclear plant, and I know my people in, my viewers, my people in Europe will get worried, Will the Zapor is the Zaporizhia nuclear plant safe? Just, we'll just quickly have a look. King of Swords, strategy planning, abuse of power. So there's, be, there's plans in place already. The Five of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles in the past. So there's been already moves um, from Europe and America uh, to try and try and foresee something like this happening and then to protect. There's been a lot of money go into, I think. Now, Russia still controls Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Um, the Wheel of Fortune. So we have here the Eight of Wands in the here and now. This is kind of what worries me. We're going to hear something beyond the 23rd of March strikes around this, this dam. Uh, this is in the here and now. Um, the Sword of Truth is in the um, Hopes and Fears. And then we get the Hermit card, uh, Reflection Review, uh, the World card, Endings and beginnings and the King of Cups. Again, America somehow playing this role. Um, isolation. This could speak to the money uh, that may pass for Ukraine. Um, as I said, a version of it will pass through the Congress. The moon, the hierophant, the ultimate authority. Um, the moon is extremely watery as well. Um, is it safe? The Hermit card is not... <laughs> As far as I read it anyway, not a straight out yes. Let's see, is it safe, please? Can you clarify the hermit? Why is the hermit card here? Isolation, people being cut off, page of wands, and strength, and the lovers. 
the King of Pentacles. Um, homes, family, crops destroyed, plan B, downfalls and secrets. Energy we can't see. I've all right, let's look at uh it's a crossroads time. It's the Zaporizhia nuclear plant safe. Again, I'm seeing the six of swords energy. Um and this could be and I'm also seeing waves as well. I hope that any any danger of that damn wall breaking is you know is able the is able to be reinforced and that could be what's happening right now there could be reinforcing of that damn wall um or contingency plans for the the smaller dam that supplies Zaporizhia. all right let's um let's see um but we're seeing an escalation in Ukraine and Russia. We're actually seeing that. That's happening now. Show me Ukraine. Okay. Will the aid to Ukraine pass in the US Congress? Will the aid to Ukraine pass in the US Congress? Because all of this weakens the current president. I'm saying yes. Again, I'm I'm not surprised. And we've got Biden, the president, uh, and we've got yes. Uh, he's been working pretty hard behind the scenes. Uh, this is in the past, juggling, he's, you know, having to negotiate Ukraine, waiting for its ship to come in, and we get the Knight of Swords. Um, it, it is going to pass. I think it will be brought to the floor uh, of the house. We get the past in the here and now and the moon, the volatility, um, the volatility of our times. We get victory in the hopes and fears, and then we get the Three of Swords as the outcome, heartbreak, loss, and then we get the Page of Swords, the treason, the, uh, the spy in the camp, the magger element, and then having to defend oneself. Um, five of Pentacles. So I do feel that if it does pass, it will be cut down. Um, why is this Three of Swords here? Good cards. So I'm feeling some will pass, but not. Maybe it's changed in some way. Show me this Three of Swords. Of course, retreat, loss, illusion. Okay, so Johnson will probably be ousted if he brings this to the floor. Um, but if it if he does, I think it will pass in some form. But there are problems with it, although the Three of Swords could be for the speakership that he's removed. He's removed as the speaker and chaos then reigns because how do they choose another speaker? Very volatile times. Okay, um, what can we do on the eclipse? Well, we can understand that we can understand that what is unfolding is not always the worst case scenario, that there is always, always hope. There is always hope for balance and recovery and there's always hope to avert a disaster providing we apply the right pressure and that's why uh, predictors like myself and others exist to uh, open uh, open up to the bigger picture, the esoteric picture through predictions, through astrology readings and to understand that we we will get through it. We ultimately will get through it. This is a huge time of learning and change. And I say that during every reading. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, uh, stay safe and um, go go inward. This is a time of great healing, remember great healing with Chiron being exactly conjunct the sun and the moon. Great healing. Bye for now.